It's your boy Billy Mac. We are back. We are back. Billy Mac is back. That's for my boy Richard now. Um, we are here. Here. One more again. With my Cowboys on. Holla at your boy. Um, so, this video is a sports video. We're going to talk about LeBron James and the Lakers. I'm a Laker fan all day long. I'm a Laker fan. So, the reports are coming out that LeBron is basically calling out his teammates for not having a sense of urgency, for not being privy to what's really going on. Um, This sports... You know, like in my other video, this is, it's about sports with a little bit of mycology put into it. Um, the only organized sport that I ever did was track and field. I didn't get to play football. I played, I, I, I almost played football or I should say I played football, but I quit before anything even happened. So... That's why I just tell people I never got to play football. The reason I didn't get to play football, mentally I wasn't ready. And I have resented it and resented it and resented quitting football and never playing again for, for most of my life. And literally over the last couple of years, I've started to revisit it. And I've now, and I'm, I'm bringing this full circle to talk about LeBron. I am now to the point where it might have been best if I didn't play football. Not because of health related stuff. Not because... I wasn't going to be good. I knew I, I was going to be good. I knew I was going to be good. <laughs> Trust me. I knew I was going to be good. Um, it, 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 had nothing, it had nothing to do with ability. It had nothing to do with talent. It had, it, it's, the reason I think the Lord didn't allow me to play football is my mindset, my competitive mindset. My favorite, one of my favorite players in NFL history. In fact, I'm going to just give you, I'm going to give you my quick, top, I'm going to give you my top three. I ain't going to give you my top five. But I'm going to give you my top three with one caveat. Okay? And the caveat being just letting you know how I feel about somebody. Okay? My top three NFL players of all time, number one, Deion Sanders. Number two, Michael Irvin. Number three, Terrell Owens. Now, there's a, there's a little something that all three of those guys have in common. There's a little something that all three of those guys have in common. You know what it is? It's the mindset of, I know I'm good. I'm the best mother out here. And can't nobody stop me. That's why I like those guys. Because no matter what was going on in the game. They came to play. And they knew they were the baddest mothers on the field. You understand what I'm saying? And here's my caveat. You know who's not even in my top 10? Randy Moss. Randy Moss has that same mentality. He knew he was the baddest mo mofo on the planet. He knew he was the baddest mofo on, on the field. But the one thing he did that those other three would never do a day in their life, he quit on his team. He quit on his team. Basically told the Oakland Raiders, I play when I want to play. Oh, really? Oh, really? 
And and funny me, he tells the Oakland Raiders he played when he want to play, and then his his reward is he goes to New England. Crazy. Crazy. But anyway. I bring that up. Because. The question. The thought. The theory that I have. When it comes to that type of mindset. Is does that make you a bad teammate? Personally. I don't think so. It didn't make Dion a bad teammate. It didn't make Michael Irvin a bad teammate, but for some odd reason, it made T.O. a bad teammate. Maybe T.O. was a little more bolsterous with it than the other two. Maybe the other two were more behind the scenes like, hey, man, y'all need y'all to step the fuck up. You know what I mean? Why T.O. would get in front of the cameras and be like, these motherfuckers need to step the fuck up. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it, it just... That's the difference. We all, listen, for anybody that's been in sports, you all know what goes on in the locker room. You all know what goes on in the locker room. There's some realness that comes with being in that locker room. And that's why I think the Lord blocked me from being on the football field because I think I would have been a bad teammate. And, it, and it's not because... It's not because I am a bad person, per se. I just know I would have been the type of guy, when it was crunch time, I'm giving 110%. And if I felt, not the coaches... Not the other players, not the fans, not the people cheering for you, not your mama, not your daddy, not the media. If I felt like you didn't give the same amount, I'm calling you out. Oh, I'm calling you out. <laughs> I'm calling you out. And mind you, I'm 32 years old. I'm 32. Okay? Okay. It took to it, it took me into my 30s to realize this, okay? So what if I had played high school, I played college, and hopefully I got to the NFL? It would have been until I was almost 30 years old till it hit me that, hmm, maybe I'm just better than everybody. And maybe everybody else just doesn't have the talent to get to my level. And I think that's what T.O. has, now I don't want to say failed to realize. I think that's, that's why he came off as the bad guy. Because T.O. has this mindset, the worst, t the worst thing to me that you can say to somebody is, if I can do it, you can do it. That's not necessarily true. And I think T.O. had that mindset. T.O.'s mindset was basically, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do sit-ups, if I can do 100 sit-ups in my driveway, you can do 100 sit-ups in your driveway. If I, can get, if I can come to team meetings on time and understand coverage and know route combinations, then damn it, you can do it too. That's my thought. Because that's what I would have thought if I had to play football. I've seen you in the weight room. I've seen you in practice. I know you can do it. So I need you to do it. Forgetting the fact that they might be going up against another lineman, another D lineman, a linebacker, another corner or wide receiver that's just better than they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just might be better than they are. That's just my theory on why 
So bringing that full circle to LeBron James, LeBron James is basically saying these guys have no urgency. They don't understand. We trying to get into the playoffs, this, that, and the other. He's calling them out. But LeBron, you're freaking LeBron James. <laughs> you, sir, are considered the greatest player in NBA history. The best player in the NBA right now. You're considered that guy. How how in the world can you elevate the, the rest of your team, bro? They ain't even on your skill level. They don't have the amount of cachet that you do. They don't have the amount of experience that you have. The only other person on that team that might have that type of urgency is Rondo. Other than that, ain't nobody else on that team. With a team full of young guys, maybe Tyson Chandler, maybe. But for the most part, ain't nobody else on that team feeling the pressure. Am I? Do I think LeBron James is wrong for what he did? Part of me, part of me, no, no, because they do. They need to know what the is going on. They need to know the playoffs are literally around the corner. April is literally a month away. April is a month away. And y'all sitting up here like, ah, you know, yeah, we might not make it, dog. No, yeah, uh-uh, no, we ain't, no, we ain't, mm, no, we ain't going into that like that, no. Nah, not with that mindset. We ain't, we ain't doing that. No, nah, we, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing, we ain't doing this, ah, I don't know, kind of stuff. No, nah, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. So, that's my thought on LeBron James and the Lakers right now. That's my team. I hope they make the playoffs. Part of me don't want them to make the playoffs because if they make the playoffs, more likely they're going to be the eight seed and they're going to face Golden State. They're going to face Golden State. And I don't think we have anybody on our team that the only way we could beat Golden State. I'm going to tell you right now. Here's the only way. Here, here's my quick top five. The only way we can beat Golden State. Number one, Steph Curry have a bad day. Number two, Klay Thompson have a bad day. Number three, Draymond Green has a bad day. And number four, Brandon Ingram averages 30 through the whole series. And last but not least, Kevin Durant has to have a bad series. I mean, I'm talking about Kevin Durant needs to average 15 through the whole series. But then again, that might be a bad thing because the reason he's averaging 15 is because Clay, Steph, Draymond, and DeMarcus Cousins are all going off. So he don't need to he don't need to score that often. But anyway, I need to do a sports sermons on my thoughts on Kevin Durant going to the Warriors. I think y'all find that very interesting. But anyway, that's my whole thing on the Lakers for right now. We'll see what happens. We'll see what's going on. But until then, it's your boy Billy Mac. Please like. Please subscribe. Please share. Leave some comments. Let me know how you what you think about the whole situation. Let me know how you think about what I'm saying. Are you are you the same way? You feel like your teammates need to step the heck up? <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like uh, if I can do it, you can do it mentality? Hey, let me know. Well, it's your boy, Billy Mackey and T. Holla at you next time. Peace.